Hey friends, this is Kate from Kate's Crafting Corner. Um, today is going to be super busy. So it is the first of the last group stage matches. So we're going to get official countries eliminated, stuff like that. It is the 29th of November. And today is going to be especially crazy because yesterday was the first day I basically missed like all, all of the matches. I woke up about 20 minutes into the first match. I overslept. Um, it was the final 2 a.m. match, so thank goodness we are done with that. But um, I kind of watched at it. I laid in bed with it on the TV for like the first half, maybe more. Um, and so I didn't take any notes, I didn't make any videos or anything like that. And then during the second match, I was trying to get everything put together so that I could go to the post office. And, this, and then I was finishing the paperwork for my employment. Um, and after that, I went out to the, um, the district office to drop off my employment and get the paperwork for the fingerprint scanning and they told me that the fingerprint scanning place opened at nine and that was at eight o'clock and the match started at eight so I was like well this is more important to take care of so I went to Walmart and bought some Christmas things that'll show up in vlogmas and <clears throat> um oh I finally found the dog events so that was good and I um, then got fingerprinted, then I went and dropped off the packages in the mail at the post office, and um, then I decided to, because I haven't actually ever driven past the school site or anything to see where it's located, and I thought that would be a good thing to do while I was out and about anyways, so I drove... Um, I drove past the school. I could see now where it's located. Um, and so that was good. That was good to d be able to do. And um, then I had to stop at Petco to get more pet food because we're going through like a bag a week right now with all the dogs in the house. Um, came home and the final match of the day had just started, but I, I knew I had to leave for something else like as soon as it was done. So I was putting stuff away and only really had it on in the background. Um, and then when that ended, we had to go to downtown Sacramento to cure my ballot because, um, so they sent me a ballot with my maiden name on it and I didn't know like what signature they would be using to verify it. Well, so I signed it with my maiden name, not thinking that I should have signed it with the signature, of my maiden name, which is actually what they had on file. Not even, um, not even my married name. So <coughs> I went to home. So my husband and I went down there. It was like about 45 minutes each way. And, um, we, uh, got me re-registered and now my vote will count and on an ordinary year I might not have done this because um I I don't think my vote would have really made any kind of a difference or anything like that however we wanted it to count because you know I I got a chance to vote for my husband for school board and even though I mean he he's already been called by the, um, the school district, the superintendent, um, to set up a meeting so they could start planning and talking. So it's like, it's already a lock, but I wanted to be able to vote for my husband and for my vote to count. So we did that. <clears throat> and then we had the vet visit at four. So we had to come back immediately from that and get the little puppies ready for the vet. <coughs> <coughs> um, we got them all weighed and checked. The vet um, did a check to make sure they're all okay. And um, 
then they got their shots into warming. So they're, they're, with puppies, there are three sets of shots that are four weeks apart. You get them at eight weeks, 12 weeks, and 16 weeks. And usually the new owners do that. But we like to make sure that they have at least their first set of shots so that we're giving them the best chance that they can have. And so, um, yeah, we always make it a priority to make sure we get that visit done. So we did that. Unfortunately, there was a ton of little puppy doggy car sickness involved in this trip. Um, there was at least six different throw ups. And I think it was from three different puppies. Um, so that was a lot of cleaning up and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, this is pretty common with small dogs because the movement of the vehicle just, it, it makes their tummies move a lot more and they get car sick. So, um, yeah, the vet visit went good. We got home and uh, I don't know, I was talking with my husband for like a couple of hours. Um, Oh yeah, no. So we had to give all of the puppies baths. That's why I was talking with him for a couple of hours because I was washing the little puppies one at a time and he was blow drying them um, because with the cold of winter, just can't let them air dry. We don't want to risk them getting sick or anything. So uh, we did that. And then he had to go out to run a few more errands. And by that time I'd been up for a long time. I was really tired. Sorry. So I went to bed. So I need to watch all of yesterday's matches still. Um, I am in the middle of editing my Vlogmas preview video. That didn't get done um, in a timely manner either. So I'm almost done with that though. I do know I'm almost done. Um, so my plan is to... Um, Oh, it's all going to be, there's a lot of work to do it today. So I have three soccer vlogs I need to get done today. Um, uh, so I will be, okay, here's the schedule for today. Today is the group A and group B last set of matches. So at 7 a.m., which is like 10 minutes, um, Ecuador and Ecuador is going to be playing against Senegal and Netherlands is going to be playing against Qatar. So I will be watching live the Ecuador versus Senegal match. Um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for Senegal. I'd love to see them advance. So we'll see what happens. I'm expecting the Netherlands to beat Qatar. Um, uh, depending on the scores, I mean, there is a chance that Netherlands could get eliminated, but it's not likely. So that's why I'm watching Ecuador versus Senegal. Then there's, so this is a 7 a.m. match. We have been having an 8 a.m. match, so this is an hour earlier. The next match, set of matches, is um, at 11. So I think that if I start it immediately after the end of the first set of matches, I can watch the other match that was happening simultaneously that I've DVR'd. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. Um, so that I can just like be able to wrap it up all the way at the end. And then at 11 AM, we have Wales versus England and Iran versus USA. I am planning on watching the Iran versus USA match. Um, I, with a win, the United States will move on. So that's why I'm watching that match. Wales has a very slim chance of being able to move on, but the USA, I'm really hopeful for. So um, that's the match I'll watch live. And then after that's done, I will watch the other match and I will um, do an update after each of those. So those are today's matches. So when that's done and I've watched all the matches, I hope to go back and watch yesterday's matches that I missed and be able to just put these videos together um, and get them put out. We will see what happens, but luckily 
I mean, tomorrow's matches don't start again until 7 a.m., so um, I don't need to, like, be worried about having to wake up at 2 a.m. anymore, so hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to accomplish everything I want to get accomplished. Um, my main priority craft-wise today is to finish this sock. I think I can do it. Um, I, I didn't work at it on it at all yesterday, so I have about 27 rounds left on the foot and then it's the toe. And so that should be easily doable. Um, and then after that, I'm going to cast on the cuffs for the, the advent socks that I'm doing the cuffs ahead of time. The needles came for the other set of advent socks but I am casting those on with the first day's yarn so I'm not gonna be starting those yet um and then when when I finish that if hopefully I have time I will finally start the first uh advent uh sorry the snow globe um so and then I'm hoping that will mean that tomorrow will be a relatively easy going day before vlogmas where I'm not like running around with a ch like a chicken with my head cut off. So I am going to stop this here. Um, I'm still going to try to upload the games by the day that they should be. So even though I'm filming this first, it won't go up to last. And I I'll have to say that in an intro in, um, for, for the games that I'll be watching for yesterday. Luckily now I'll be able to like fast forward through the halftime show and everything. So Anyways, okay, that's all for now, and I will do another update in a little bit. Bye. Oh man, the match is over, and guys, Senegal made it through. I'm so excited. There have been some video clips, um, images of the Ecuadorian players sobbing on the field and you know what I don't blame them I know a lot of people are like it's just a game but for these guys it's a dream it's a dream that just died and um my heart goes out to them but I am so glad that Senegal made it through uh this game started out the first half I wrote down lots of missed opportunities for Senegal Here's part of the problem for Ecuador. They went into the match knowing that a draw or a win would see them through. So they played a little bit too conservatively in that they weren't necessarily trying for a goal because a, a tie would have seen them through. And that is a dangerous game to play. It really is. Um, I find frequently when teams do that, when they're like okay with the draw, that's when they lose. Um, but Senegal kept shot after shot. They were constantly in, um, I, I almost said Panama. It's not Panama. It's Ecuador's, uh, side of the field by their goal. And finally in the 41st minute that paid off. Senegal was awarded a penalty. It was deserved. There was no controversy over it. And finally a penalty was called by the referee and it wasn't VAR interfering saying there should be a penalty. Uh, VAR confirmed there should be a penalty, but they did not call the penalty. Anyways, so Ismala Sar scored for Senegal, um, making it 1-0 going into halftime. In the 67th minute, well, coming out from halftime, Ecuador knew that they needed to score. Um, that was the only way that they were going to be able to progress out of the group is they had to at least tie it up or take the lead. And so they came out showing fight, showing more spirit. And um, in the 67th minute, Casado scored for Ecuador. It was a very poor defending from Senegal on his set piece. He was left completely unmarked in the box and he scored. It was it was a good goal for him. Um, and that tied it up 1-1. At this point, Senegal would be leaving because they had to win. They had to win. They could not tie. They could not lose. They had to win. Um, and so they came back from, you know, the goal celebration and everything. And the first thing that happens in the 69th minute. So Ecuador scored in the 67th minute. 
in the 69th minute, Koulibaly scored for Senegal. He is the captain of the Senegal Senegalese team, and this was his first ever international goal, which is remarkable. Um, at that point, it was really an open game. Ecuador knew they needed to score or they'd be out. Senegal was looking for another goal to just shore up their win. And um, that's the scoreline that it ended with, 1-2. So uh, I just wanted to do a real quick recap here because I am now going to go watch the Netherlands versus Qatar match. I do know that, um, wait, did I write down the wrong start time? Why is it saying 1 p.m. Eastern? Okay, I am going to check the times of the games and make sure that it starts, um, because I have written down that it starts at 11, but that's indicating that it starts at 10, so I need to double check the start time. Um, I will be watching the United States versus Iran, um, but I was hoping to be able to watch the Netherlands match before those matches, but we'll see. I may, I may not be able to, in which case I'll probably just do a little video editing in the meantime. So, um, it, this is saying Iran versus United States 1 p.m. Eastern, which is 10 a.m. my time. So, um... I, I'll probably, though, put the Netherlands Qatar commentary in between here. I do know the scoreline, but I haven't seen any of the play, and I want to watch it and report back to you guys. So, Senegal move on, and I am so very excited. They, were, they came in second place in this group, so yay. And I think the next match will determine who their opponent is. I'm not positive, but I'm going to update my spreadsheet now, and I'll talk to you guys about what happened later. So, um, this Iran versus United States, no, stop. Group B final matches are Iran versus the United States and England versus Wales. This is a must, okay, in this group, literally any country could go through. Wales, it is an uphill battle, but the United States <clears throat> have to, could they tie? No, they have to win. The United States have to win to advance um, because a tie would mean Iran get a point too and then Iran and England would have at least four points. So this is a must win game for the United States. There are no alternatives. You cannot tie and go through, you have to win. So I am hoping for a United States win. I think that they deserve it. Um, I. I'm really nervous, but I would love to see the United States in the knockout stages. I will go find another patriotic shirt to wear. Um, I should have more that you guys haven't seen yet. Um, and I'll get my beads on again and a cup of tea because I haven't had anything to drink. And um, I am so I'm so excited for this game. I really do need to confirm this because for every single day I have that the second game is at 11, but I could have just been copying what it was before. So yeah, need to double check the start time. But um, yeah, so I, I would love for Wales to go through, but it's really an uphill battle. I predict excuse me, that England will win the game and then they will take the top of the group. Um, so we will see in which case um, Wales would end at the bottom of their group. So we will see what happens, but I will bring you the updates and keep track of the notes and everything like that. Um, I haven't gotten any crafting done because I was doing some tidying and then I was also editing um, videos and getting things ready for Vlogmas. So um, it's a busy work day in terms of vlog work. Um, but yeah, we will see. So I will come back soon with more updates.
talk to you guys later. Bye. I have checked the TV guide and I've checked the website and the game is not supposed to start until 11. And so I think that they're meaning that their coverage is going to begin at 10. I am going to therefore try to watch this Netherlands versus Qatar match. I think that I should be able to do it, especially fast forwarding through um fast forwarding through the halftime and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do that now and then bring you the roundup and conclusions. And so I know that the Netherlands wins <laughs> two zero. I think was, I actually don't know for sure the final scoreline. I think it's 2-0, but I could be totally, I could be wrong. So I'm going to watch that now and I will be working on some editing stuff, um, on YouTube and, um, on my laptop. So that's what I'll be doing during the match. Um, and then I hope during the U S match to work on the socks. So um, yeah, just trying to get some admin type of stuff done. I will catch up with you guys then very soon. Bye. Okay, Netherlands beat um, Qatar 2-0. to zero. It was a good match, but <coughs> <coughs> Netherlands leave a lot to be desired, to be honest. They need to pick up their pace if they're hoping to go far, which considering that they played the runner-up, which is most likely America, in the next round um i'm okay if they don't manage to pick it up because i would love for america to win um and keep going so in the 25th minute and 50 seconds cody gakpo scored for the netherlands this is his third goal of the tournament which is remarkable and impressive um in the 48th minute and 50 second um, Frankie de Young scored for the Netherlands right off the line. It was a beautiful goal. Um, that's about all there is to say. I'm rushing because the, they're singing the national anthem. So, um, yes, United States versus Iran. Hey, baby, baby, come here. Come here. No, we're not going outside right now. My husband's in a meeting, so asked me to keep the dogs in here. So there are 11 dogs in here, and the little ones do not like to be confined. Anyway, so I've got my beads on. We are about 60 seconds from kickoff. I am wearing Born Free, Live Free. Um, and let's go, America. <laughs> Apparently, the big chant with uh, fans right now is, it's called soccer, and I think that's because of the David Beckham um, Peyton Manning commercials of football versus soccer and I actually am really enjoying those commercials I think they're quite funny um, I finally have some Chipotle my husband went and got it for me last night so I am extremely grateful for that fact uh, the common prediction with the commentators seem to be that this match ends two to one I'd like to see no goals scored by Iran as I am really impressed with the American goalkeeper right now and I'd love for him to have a clean sheet. So, uh, two to zero, two to zero sounds like a good final score. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. I'll keep you updated. Can't believe I actually managed to watch two matches on time today like that, um, with them being so congested, but yeah, let's go America. And, um, I will talk with you guys later. Oh, during the last match, the Netherlands won, I managed to get up a trailer for my Vlogmas, and the pre-Vlogmas video is loading right now. I think I'm going to schedule that to go live tomorrow morning, um, so that it will be like one day before Vlogmas starts. So, I'm really super excited, and that's about all I have to say. The it's about to kick off, so I'm going to end this right now, and I've got some knitting to work on, so talk to you guys later. Bye. The match is over, and we did it. Go USA. We won. We are moving on out of the group stage. Last World Cup, we didn't even qualify, and this World Cup, we're moving on to the group stage, so I am so excited. Um, <coughs> this was a match. 
in which only one goal was scored, one to zero. Um, I'm recapping the Iran versus the USA match, not the England versus Wales. I haven't watched that one yet, but I'll watch it next. Anyways, so in the 37th minute, Christian Pulic scores for America, and he, um, he makes it 1-0. Unfortunately, however, when he scored, he got kneed in the face by the Iranian goalkeeper. He was actually down on the ground for over three minutes, and then he was on the sidelines for another two minutes before he went back into the game to try to just make it to halftime. He managed to make it to halftime, but he didn't come back out afterwards. And at the end of the game, the coach said that he doesn't have an update on his um, status. However, it was an abdominal issue. So that's really sucks. Um, this is a guy who is basically the maker for the American team. The commentators call him Captain America. Um, he's not the captain of the team. I believe that's um, Tyler Adams or Ta Tyler Adams, I believe. It's, it's Taylor or Tyler, but his last name is Adams for sure. Um, but he he's the captain. However, Christian Pulich is the one that at the end of the day, we need to do well. And I don't know if anyone has seen any of the commercials that have him, but it's like kind of kind of recapping his life like he, he was real young when he went to Dortmund um to be a player there now it's just talking about like it's like he's on a psychologist's uh couch and they're like where is all this pressure coming from and it's like everywhere <laughs> everyone and so there is a lot of pressure on his shoulders and he did it and he put his body on the line and he had to be subbed out. Hopefully he'll be available for our next match, but which, um, is going to be a hard one because it's going to be, um, it's going to be versus the Netherlands. Um, I'm hopeful for us as America. Um, because I don't think the Netherlands have been performing to par. They are pretty lucky that they were in a fairly easy group with Qatar, um, who didn't win a single match and is the first host country to have not won a single match. Um, so, yeah. I, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I'm so excited. But anyways, so... Uh, at the 45th minute and two minutes into that extra stoppage time, I ran, sorry, I ran had a player who had to be subbed out due to injury. So this was, this was a tough match. Um, in the last minute of stoppage time of the first half, the USA had a goal ruled off sides, which really sucked. Um, I don't know. It, it's another one where the technology, the technology said it was offsides, whatever. I just, I need to stop complaining about it, but I hate it. Um, anyways, so I'm really proud of America. It was very nervy at the end of the second half. Like, whew, I felt at any minute Iran was going to score because all they had to do, all Iran had to do was equalize or win. Um, so a tie would have seen America knocked out of the World Cup and it felt like they kept turning the ball over. Walker Zimmerman had a fantastic, he was subbed in. He had been starting, I believe, and so he was subbed in and he made very, some very crucial saves and headers um, to keep the U.S. in it. So good job to Walker Zimmerman. Our goalkeeper, um, Matt Oh my gosh, his name just escaped me. Uh, oh man. Not Adams. Oh man. Anyways, he's been having a fantastic tournament. Um, unfortunately, the United States 
they've only conceded one goal, but they've only scored two, and that is not going to do it. We need to really start scoring more goals or or we're going to have a hard time. Um, I'm sorry, they're having some replays, and I'm trying to see if they're going to show the goalkeeper's name because they're showing an Iranian attack right now. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, it was a good match. I'm so excited. <sighs> England won their game. I do know that. So it's England progressing at the top of the group and the United States in the second place, which leaves Iran and Wales eliminated. So at the end of this first day of the third round of the group stages, this is what it looks like. We have five countries eliminated. And tomorrow we'll see another four team four countries knocked out so um i'm gonna watch the england iran match then i will come back and recap that and then i will do a preview of tomorrow's matches with my predictions but i have to say for both groups i predicted the one and two correctly look at that here was my prediction netherlands and senegal netherlands and senegal I even got Ecuador and Qatar in the right place. Over here, I predicted England, USA, and it was England, USA. I just got third and fourth place wrong. So for as many wrong predictions as I made, I got some right. Like I'm not completely off base here. So we'll see what happens in tomorrow's matches and if I can keep that going. So, sorry. I am going to watch this last match, recap it, and then work on some editing. Although I need to watch yesterday's matches too. I did not get any knitting or anything done um, during the match. I was just, I was really focused and uh, nervous. <laughs> so I'm so glad that we won. Um, I will come back in a couple of hours with another recap. I need to go get something to drink and something to eat for lunch. Um, yeah, did I eat something? Oh yeah, I ate the rest of my Chipotle burrito. So I guess we only get something to drink. Um, but I will catch up with you guys later. Bye. Hey y'all, okay. <clears throat> Back later than expected um, because I edited and got uploaded the um the vlogmas preview in the trailer um the the prep video is scheduled to go up in the morning but i edited it and got it all ready and then the trailer's already up so now i've just finished watching the england wales game sorry oh my gosh i'm I'm pretty tired. I don't think I'm going to make it through four more soccer matches today. Um, so I might try to get this one edited and I don't know. See what I can do. Maybe I can make one more. It's um, it's 8 p.m. I shouldn't be this tired. But anyways, so England versus Wales or rather Wales versus England in the 35th minute nico williams was forced to come off with a concussion um what's kind of interesting about this is there are two nico williamses at this tournament um and they're in two different countries so i think it's really interesting when there's two people uh, with the same name, especially when they're representing different countries. Okay. Anyway, the other interesting thing about this is, so this happened in the 35th minute. In the 37th minute in the other game, at the so almost at the exact same time, that's when um, Kristen Pulich got concussed as well so interesting that there was two concussions in two matches playing simultaneously at almost the exact same time um there's a lot more concussions 
or regard for possible concussions than there have been in the past. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so then this went, this match went to um, the halftime 0-0. Zero, zero. And um, in the 49th minute, Marcus Rashford scored from a set piece for England and made it a 0-1 for England. In the 50th minute, Foden, I did not get his first name, scored for England. This is his third international goal, and that made it 0-2. Then in the 67th minute, Marcus Rashford scored again um, for England. So that tied it up. Um, to be honest, this was a fairly boring game. What, um, if you're only going to watch one game from today, this is not the one I would pick. Uh, my mom and sister and nephew started out watching the England game, and at halftime they squ switched to the U.S. game. My nephew had wanted to watch England. Uh, that's why they watched it. Sorry. Um, but, yeah. Even, I mean, even with the goals scored, it wasn't very thrilling. It's like, you know, um, Wales knew they had a very slim chance of making it out. They would need a miracle in the other game, plus a massive victory in this one. And once England got the first goal or two, they subbed out their primary players that they were trying to protect from injury going forward or yellow cards. And so it, it just wasn't a very exciting game. I'm glad I watched it, definitely, because, um, I mean, the players are all still very talented, but, um, yeah, it just wasn't exciting. So anyways, so that ties up groups A and B, um, so... I predicted this group A standings exactly how it turned out. I predicted group B, I had the bottom two flipped, but I still had who was going through correct and who was not. Which brings us to um, the next set of matches, which you can see here. So, it'll be Netherlands versus the United States, I believe, on Saturday. And then on Sunday, England will play Senegal. Um, and that will be at 11 a.m. The Netherlands versus the U.S. match will be at 7 a.m. my time. So, not done with early mornings, just not 2 a.m.s anymore. <laughs> Tomorrow's matches, um, let's just preview that and then I'm going to be done with this video and get it um, probably edited. Tomorrow's first games are Group D and at, so at 7 a.m. And that will be Australia versus Denmark and Tunisia versus France. France are already through, so that game is relatively meaningless. I mean, there's a chance. Okay, so right now in that group, you have France at the top with six points. Denmark and Tunisia both have one, and their goal differential is both negative one. And then Australia, surprisingly enough, has three points. So I think that the match I'm going to watch live will be Australia versus Denmark. I would be happy with either of those teams going through. I'm probably rooting a tiny bit more for Denmark just because of everything with Christian Eriksen. Um, but yeah, I don't anticipate Tunisia beating France, even though France is probably going to play a B team to protect some of their players. I still think that they'll manage to pull it out. Um, 
so then it really comes down to what happens in that other game, the one I plan on watching, Australia versus Denmark. Um, later that day, tomorrow, <laughs> that day, later that day, um, later tomorrow, Group C will be playing. And so right now the standings are Poland with four points, Argentina with three, Saudi Arabia with three, and Mexico is at the bottom with a single point. So literally any of these groups could go through. Um, it will probably, it'll probably be the, whoever wins the matches, each of the matches. So you have Poland versus Argentina. Um, and you have Saudi Arabia versus Mexico. So my guess is a Poland win. Oh, Poland versus Argentina. Oof, it will be hard for Poland to win that match. I would like Poland to win, um, but Argentina will probably prevail. They're tournament favorites. And then I'm expecting Mexico to win, but they have not been playing on form. Um, if they win that game, that'll put them on four points. And that's the same as what Poland has. So then it will come down to goal differential. Um, so the match I'm going to watch will be Poland, the Poland versus Argentina match. Um, so this group really is wide open and anything can happen. So, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, craft wise, I managed to finish my, oops, there it goes. I managed to finish my sock. Um, I really enjoyed this pattern. It is such a simple repeat pattern. And I put it on and it fits perfectly. So this really is the best formula for me is a US 1.5 needle and um, a regular size. So 64 stitches. <clears throat> it just, it fits perfectly. So I, it's been, <laughs> I've been knitting socks for like four years now. And I finally found what works best for me. So, you know, you just have to keep trying things and adjusting things until you find the perfect fit for you, the perfect number of stitches on your foot, your leg. Um, I used to make my legs longer and I just don't prefer that as much. So, um, yeah, so it's really exciting to discover these kind of things. I am going to cast on the cuffs. Um, maybe we'll edit it. Oh, sorry. Maybe we'll editing. Um, and then work on the cross stitch. So that's my plans. I will be back bright and early tomorrow. I think I'm gonna go make a dinner real quick. So talk to you guys later. Bye.